I thought this might be aimed at me more than the others of it, but uh, the answer is that there is uh, a huge amount of good in the bill. Uh, lots of access on public health, setting up democratic structures for local public health and well-being boards, uh, making sure a lot of quangos that um, uh, shouldn't be there have gone. It responded to the need to give professionals more say rather than tiers of management. And by the end of the process, by the end of the process, it was amended in more than a thousand ways to make sure that no way will it lead to privatization of the health service, marketization of the health service, or the un well, 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 it's no saying rubbish if you haven't looked at the bill carefully and seen the changes. I'm aware it's controversial. It's not a bill I would have introduced. Uh, it was negotiated as part of a coalition government, but it, for example, I end with this, has stopped all the things that Labour did when they were in power, forced privatization of certain services, forced additional money being paid to the private sector over the public sector, and all, all that is entirely prevented. I tried to read and understand the bill, but I'm afraid I couldn't make head or tail of it. But um, some uh, clever people than I did try to explain it to me. And the, the areas where I have particular worries are about research, about public health, which seems to me uh, completely hamstrung by this bill, and finally, that there seems to be a complete fragmentation of the health system that will come as a result. I think the bill is an absolute disaster. It's privatisation by the back door and it's really going to damage health in the UK. I was always opposed to the bill. I thought it was based on a false premise that the NHS was in crisis, which clearly it wasn't until this government started messing with it. Uh, I think when you look... <laughs> When you look at the uh, international performance, if you look objectively at the international performance of the NHS, it fares very, very well against other um, healthcare systems and it makes very good um, value for money. Uh, the very fact that the bill needed a thousand different amendments, of course, means that it was really hopelessly a flaw and probably would have been better off just ditching it and actually starting again. In fact, it didn't really need a bill because I think what the bill failed to address was some of the real problems of the NHS. One of them is integration between primary and secondary care. I think there's far too much um, discontinuity between primary and secondary care in the UK. And what you need to do is to forge closer working relationships between general practice and hospital services. And I don't think that can be done in an increasingly fragmented service like the one we're going to be seeing. I think the other fundamental problem was it didn't address the conflict of interest uh, with, in general practitioners, many of whom have interest or increasing number have interest in companies which will be providing services and at the same time they're commissioning those services. So of course they can walk out of the room and, and they can, but in, in, in real terms it's going to be very difficult to avoid those conflicts of interest. And my real concern is that it's going to damage the standing of the GPs in the community. I speak as a, someone who's a GP for, for 20 years. I think it is going to raise public questions about um, the role of general practice and their responsibility for what may be very unpopular uh, local decisions in a difficult financial era. So I'm, I think it was the wrong decision. Uh, I think it shouldn't have been uh, put into, into, into place uh, and I think it shouldn't have been passed. Now that it's in place, the question is what to do about it. I think we are going to see some substantial problems as a result. I think very important for health professionals to speak out when they see those problems and to be um, very strong advocates of many of the sort of uh, the basic principles underlying the NHS that I think we all share. I give way to the Honourable Gentleman. There is no doubt that the Prime Minister has in many ways achieved substantial success. There is one statistic that I understand is not however challenging and that is that over her 11 years the gap between the richest 10% and the poorest 10% in this country has widened substantially. How can she say at the end of her chapter of British politics that she can justify many people in a constituency such as mine being relatively much poorer, much less well housed and much less well provided than it was in 1979? 
Surely she accepts that is not a record that she or any Prime Minister can be proud of, 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 can be proud of.